Hi, this is uh, uh, Prophetic Destiny Blueprint for Jennifer. This is uh, brought to you by Coca-Cola. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I uh, got some Coca-Cola. And this is a uh, no sugar edition with uh, peach. So there we go. I saw that today. I wanted a no sugar edition. And I saw the peach and I said, well, that'll be interesting. So uh, for those who are just surfed in, who've uh, not, uh, Jennifer, uh, you need to get your blueprint. They're all different. Uh, if you uh, go in the uh, description tag where it says see more and click on that, you'll be able to go and watch a playlist and you can watch hours and hours of blueprints and see how they all differ. And uh, your blueprint would differ too. I think it's a very important thing to do to order a blueprint. So I'm just going to pray uh, over this, uh, Jennifer, and uh, I invite you to uh, pray with me. Dear Father, I pray that every word spoken uh, by Matthew uh, in this blueprint would be your word coming from your Holy Spirit. I pray that these words would resonate deeply with me and uh, would begin to manifest in my life as the years go by. I uh, humbly uh, listen with an open heart and an open spirit uh, to these words and I pray that uh, they will manifest in my life. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. So, Jennifer, uh, I, first of all, I want to say I love your name. Uh, we had childhood friends. My sister had a childhood friend whose name was Jennifer, and uh, she was a lovely girl. Uh, so, the number one thing I pick up about you is your humility, your, your overarching, overriding sense of wanting to be humble. Uh, I'm sure that you would take the forefront in certain things. Uh, I'm sure that if you're invited uh, to speak on television and be interviewed, uh, you do that, although it wouldn't be your first choice. Uh, you'd even send your PA to speak on your behalf uh, rather than do it yourself. But if it was going to honour God and people were going to benefit, uh, you would uh, do so. But it's not your first choice, I believe. I believe that uh, you're very humble and... Uh, your your blueprint, as I uh, listed the nine things, it sort of bears that out. And so I've got uh, the the beauty of uh, having your blueprint in front of you, in front of me. So if you go to uh, down the bottom of the video, under, underneath my name where the description is, uh, press the see more button and it'll open up the description tag. And I've got uh, everything that I've got written on this uh, pad is written there. Uh, so if you follow me point by point, you read uh, what I say in the point and then I'll describe um, what I will say. Uh, the time here is 444. <laughs> That's a good time to start. So point number one. You're a servant of servants, like Paul was a servant to all. Paul uh, referred to himself as a drink offering, and he was poured out like a drink offering. Uh, Paul was uh, the servant of servants. And the world really needs to understand the position of servanthood. 
uh, the idea of a servant leader. Jesus modelled that. Jesus, Jesus used to send his disciples to bed at 1am. They'd question him after every night. He'd send them to bed, otherwise they'd stay up all night. And Jesus would get up about 4 to 5 a.m. and go and spend a couple of hours with uh, his father and he'd process things. He'd process the day before's activities and he'd start to get visions and preparation for the day. He needed his father. Um, then from about 7 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, Jesus just poured out of himself. He was a servant to everyone. Around about 10 or 11 o'clock, he sent people home. And then he just debriefed and answered his disciples' questions. For three and a half years, Jesus really didn't have any time to himself except those times with his father. Jesus was a servant. He still is. In heaven, uh, many Christians would see Jesus walking around with an apron on like, like a mother in a kitchen. And it's like Jesus got this apron on, running around heaven serving the Christian church. Jesus is uh, a true example of a servant. And I feel that you know that. I feel that you know that about him. And... It's that particular characteristic that you've chosen uh, to model your life on. And it's uh, truly, truly attractive. Uh, there, there's not really many books on this. I don't feel that I've seen. But uh, you're going to be a servant of servants. Yeah, you're... How can I say, it's like you're going to be a teacher and a servant to the very best apostolic leaders. The best apostolic leaders, I said, not the wannabes. Uh, so the people uh, out there in the Christian church that are really serving people really well and uh, tremendous laid down servants of all, uh, you're going to serve them and assist and teach and equip them in some way, in some measure. And uh, you're, you're, uh, the depths of your humility uh, are going to go really deep. Uh, you know, the roots of your humility, the the level of your humility is really going to have really deep roots uh, in the ground. This is uh, really an amazing uh, characteristic. Uh, Jesus said, and you know this, that uh, Jesus said, anyone who wants to become great in the kingdom must become a servant of all. And it seems that uh, so many leaders, so many prominent Christian leaders like to be served and like people to build them up, like these places of authority and leadership and ruling over people. And yet Jesus suggested the opposite. And uh, you uh, are fully commensurate, you're fully understanding of this opposite dynamic and uh, it's the only way you want to go, it's the only choice uh, that you want to take and in, in years to come, in uh, time uh, coming, people will like to uh, lift you up and put you on a throne and uh, elevate you and you'll politely not accept it. You politely decline uh, and you continue to be this servant who, who uh, 
is behind the scenes. Some some people in history have had an amazing influence on a track star or a movie star or some sort of business person. There's always someone unmentioned that has had a tremendous impact on a popular person. And many times that person isn't mentioned by the popular person because they've been asked not to be mentioned. They've been asked to be kept private. There's always someone who influences. And uh, in years to come, there's going to be many, many popular and successful people in ministry where you're going to be that person that they don't mention. You're going to be that person that built them up and equipped them, and yet you don't come out, your name isn't mentioned in the thank you speeches. Or they may actually say to that uh, person, she knows who she is, that really built me up and taught me everything, uh, who remains unnamed. So point number two, a prophet, a seer, a teacher, an equipper, teaching on the sea gifts and how to grow uh, fully and be fully uh, mature in that. There's a lot of uh, so-called seers. Uh, people uh, have the ability to see and they call themselves a seer. This is a mistake because the biblical understanding of a seer is a prophet and often uh, to be in the office of prophet takes 15 or 20 years. Uh, and uh, people who are new to the Christian faith and suddenly start seeing, start calling themselves a seer. And it's a misrepresentation of the word. There's a lot of immaturity in uh, people seeing and uh, there's a lot of boasting there's a lot of ego uh, i'm a pretty good seer myself but you'll never hear me declaring that i'm a seer i feel that you're going to bring a lot of maturity uh, to that gift a lot of understanding uh, to the gift a lot of wisdom uh, to the operation of that gift. I feel that uh, you're going to uh, uh, produce teaching, uh, whether it's video, uh, master classes, or uh, webinars, or uh, teaching on TV, with, uh, te on a TV show. Books, I don't know if I mentioned books. Uh, there's all sorts of resources that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I've got this uh, itching sensation. Uh, the enemy's attacking my health in all sorts of ways. And uh, that's one of the ways with this uh, skin rash and stuff. So um, I sense that uh, you're going to have some powerful teaching on the prophetic gift and particularly the seer gift. And uh, you may produce a book on dream interpretation. You may uh, produce a book on symbols. Uh, you may produce a few books on the prophetic gift, the office of prophet, uh, or teaching DVDs or YouTubes or However, your format, your favorite format of teaching is, uh, but I see you uh, having a major influence on people growing in that gift. And I don't feel that it's just face-to-face -face, uh, teaching. Uh, you could uh, be part of a supernatural school. Uh, you could be uh, used uh, in a supernatural school face-to-face uh, -face and be one of the teachers. 
But I see uh, people from all around the world are being able to access that. So it's like a book or YouTube uh, teaching. So some of it uh, may be face to face, uh, but uh, I see people being able to get access to the content uh, from different countries and all around the world. And uh, YouTube is good at the moment, uh, as long as it uh, continues, uh, so it can be free. And uh, that's uh, really handy for people. So I see you equipping uh, many seers, many prophets uh, with the seer gift. Number three, uh, uh, a releaser of yearly prophetic words for the church, timely and accurate. I, I'm uh, really not into these yearly words. I'm not really into these monthly words. I'm just not into them. Um, perhaps that's just simply not my flavor of the prophetic. Interestingly, uh, I just turned off a prophet who releases uh, monthly words and uh, I just uh, won't listen to her anymore. Um, and I feel that that was like the enemy uh, doing some damage in my spirit in preparation to this blueprint. Like that only happened uh, within the last week. And I think the enemy could see this blueprint happening and wanted to uh, put this real negative light on giving yearly and monthly words. But you're one person that I really feel uh, it's called to do that. Uh, I don't know if uh, you release that as a YouTube video uh, or uh, you release it at a certain prophetic conference uh, every January or every December. But I see uh, over the years, you're building a reputation and many people looking at the word and watching that word unfold during the year. Uh, I see you drawing really close uh, to the Holy Spirit and uh, being really in tune with the Holy Spirit and being used to prepare the church, prepare the body of Christ for what the Holy Spirit's going to do throughout the corporate body during the coming year. And uh, I'm not sure if you've already released yearly words in a little fashion on YouTube or on Facebook, but I see that that be a major part of uh, who you are and your ministry. And Differently to a lot of prophets wanting to get recognition and wanting to establish their authority in the church as they release a yearly word and then it plays out and gets confirmed. Rather than uh, building a name for yourself or uh, doing it uh, to uh, establish your credibility as a prophet, I see a different reason. I see total submission to the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit's agenda and what the Holy Spirit wants to accomplish. And he's using you as a trusted vessel uh, to release what he wants released. Uh, I sort of see as a servant and a laid down humble servant like you are, I can see that this isn't something that you choose to do. And uh, it's something that the Holy Spirit uh, will impress upon you and uh, have you act in obedience. And number four, um, I've never heard this before. Well, releaser of yearly words hasn't come up in any of my 35 uh, blueprints yet over. But I've never heard this before. You've become a metronome of what the spirit is doing, keeping the body in tune with the spirit. 
so a metronome is one of those things that go tick, 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 tick. And uh, uh, pianists and uh, musicians will use it to keep in time. And uh, they won't always have it on, but they'll use it during practice uh, to keep uh, things in tune, to keep things in time. And I feel that uh, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, is going to keep the body of Christ in tune and in sync with his timing and what he's doing. And he's going to, uh, Holy Spirit is going to communicate what he's up to and what he's feeling and what he desires through prophetic words, through your ministry, through uh, things that uh, you release. And uh, it's a really important thing. Huh? It's really uh, amazing. And once again, it's sort of against this servanthood bent that you have. Uh, it's uh, sort of acts in opposition to this being laid down, humble sort of attitude that you have. And to release these corporate words as often as you do uh, will be just a total act of obedience for you and uh, you'll be obeying the Holy Spirit. I, I get a sense that um, you're gonna, you already do uh, a sense, but you're going to have this very powerful uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit, I, a sense that uh, you're going to be very close to God and very close to Jesus, uh, and their relationships won't de be diminished by this powerful relationship with the Holy Spirit, but you're going to uh, really be known for your walk with the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's going to be very evident in everything you write and everything you say is going to be uh, really strongly influenced uh, by the Holy Spirit. It's like... <laughs> I sense that even now, even in your normal speech, without you even prophesying, the Holy Spirit has got a lot of control on everything you say and do. I sense that uh, you're really totally given over to the Holy Spirit. And it's the same with my life. And uh, so I can recognize it, but uh, I'm not sure if many people have recognized it. Uh, one way it would manifest is people not understanding you, people rejecting what you say, people judging you, you're being lonely, you're not having a lot of friends. This is typical because the wisdom of man, you know, the wisdom of God is foolishness to man and uh, the carnal mind can't handle the things of the spirit. And so because you're so close to the Holy Spirit, you're always saying what the Holy Spirit's leading you to say people reject it and can't understand it. Uh, so if that's typical, it doesn't have to be, but that's how it is with me. If that's typical with you, uh, you may have this uh, uh, lonely sort of misunderstood, rejected sort of life. Okay, question on point number five. Um, I'm used to doing uh, interviews with God and John Lennon and coming up with question numbers. So there we go, number five. Announcer of what is not pleasing to the Spirit of God in the church along with calls for repentance. So um, once again, <laughs> sounds like the uh, Holy Spirit's going to have you uh, do a lot of things that aren't pleasing to one's flesh. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd like this one, but I do do this one. Uh, and I've done a couple of books uh, with this. Uh, the John Lennon book that I'm doing at the moment is uh, heavily this. Um, but you're going to, you're going <laughs> to, I say going to a lot, uh, you're going to call out things that the Holy Spirit 
doesn't lie. Like, uh, having a good name among men, promoting a brand, promoting a name, uh, running things to make maximum profit, uh, withholding the truth so you can make more money, uh, large honorariums, uh, large promotion of books, marketing in the church, uh, not speaking out about sin in the church, not speaking out about bo the body of Christ being holy, uh, preaching an easy gospel, preaching a gospel without cost or price or sacrifice, preaching a healthy, wealthy and wise gospel. There's many things that the Holy Spirit doesn't like and you're going to be public and come public about these things and saying that if this refers to you, this specific thing, you need to repent and change your behaviour. Um, I can see you even going controversial uh, in this manner and naming one uh, thing that the Holy Spirit doesn't like and then naming two or three people in the public office by name and saying these are three examples. There are just thousands of people doing this, but here's three major people who are doing this and they need to repent. Uh, that would be very controversial. Uh, but uh, even without naming them, uh, you can make the sin so clear that people can identify uh, people that are doing it. This is hard. This is like an Old Testament prophet, and uh, it's part of your call. Point number six, um, you're going to have uh, a John the Baptist anointing uh, preparing uh, the church, preparing the, the actual bride for the return of Jesus. So uh, Jesus coming back for a spotless bride without wrinkle. Jesus coming back for a faithful bride that uh, hangs on his every word and does everything he says. Uh, without love for the world and the lust of the world and the flesh and the things of the world and a bride that's serving Jesus, not money, not mammon, not possessions, not reputation, not the pride of life, not anything. And uh, I sense that uh, this is like an overarching uh, big part of your ministry that uh, everything... Uh, Everything you do, every action you take, everything you say flows into this purpose that you're preparing the body of Christ to meet Jesus. Uh, everything you do will be uh, streamlined with this purpose. And uh, I just, uh, uh, I feel that you already have it, but I, I, I pray for an increase in the Elijah, John the Baptist, anointing and mantle over your life. Point number seven, evangelistic acts and outreaches, <clears throat> training and equipping ordinary believers to reach the lost. So you have, uh, even though you're very prophetic, you have a real love uh, for the world. You really have a love for the people of the world. You're very... Uh, loving and you're almost if i could say you almost get on with people with the world a lot easier than you do with christians uh, people of the world a lot more accepting of the supernatural and supernatural themes and faith-filled sort of statements than uh, people in the church uh, people in the church have always got their Bible and their radar up, like double-checking everything you say. People of the world aren't like that. They just listen without objections. Uh, so uh, I feel that you're going to be involved in an evangelistic uh, 
outreaches and certain uh, events, but also I feel that you're going to teach the ordinary believer how to model Jesus, how to wear Jesus, how to be Jesus everywhere they go and in everything that they do. I sense that uh, you're going to totally equip uh, the ordinary believer, the pucina. Uh, you're going to teach uh, the people who generally just sit in pews, but they'd like to save their friends, they'd like to save their family. You're going to teach them a non-threatening, non-evasive way of evangelizing and using their life always in an evangelistic way, uh, teaching uh, people how to just naturally be Jesus and naturally be a light to the lost. And uh, I sense that uh, you'll do really well at this. And, uh, and this is on your uh, blueprint. This is on your destiny scroll. And you're meant to uh, do this as your life. Number eight, um, you're going to model servant leadership to leaders, teach on true servanthood and authority that comes from true humility. So you're going to teach leaders how to be true servants. You're going to teach this countercultural message of being a drink offering, being a servant, uh, having a job and ministering as a pastor, having two jobs and ministering as a pastor, writing books and giving the proceeds to ministry, giving the proceeds uh, to a charity. Laying down all your time and resources for the kingdom. Uh, forsaking popularity uh, for getting your hands dirty and getting in the trenches. All sorts of countercultural, uh, counter church model uh, sort of behavior. And you're going to model that to leadership throughout your life. And then you're going to teach in it. And I can see. You uh, being at conferences, teaching this. Uh, I can see you even organising your own conferences and being one of the speakers. I can see you on a panel at a conference being interviewed about servant leadership. And uh, I think panels are really uh, handy. I learn a lot when uh, people are questioned on a panel. Uh, I feel that they're even more effective than keynote speaks or sermons, I believe. Uh, a good host uh, who's well prepared can ask some great questions and you can learn a lot in a panel discussion. I can also see you on TV, uh, Christian TV and secular TV, uh, being interviewed and uh, teaching really well. And you'll always be open to TV because you know that you're going to reach people that you wouldn't ordinarily reach with uh, your platform. And uh, so you'll always be open to using TV's reach to bring new people in to your stream. And number nine, uh, someone that's always understated you'll always be understated. You'll always not be the hero in the room. You, you'll always not be the most celebrated. And I've got uh, someone understated in all you do, assisting thousands to reach their potentials and destinies. Lifting others is your chief purpose and happiness. So uh, I sense that uh, you're going to uh, achieve your greatness by pushing people on top of your shoulders. So lifting people up and putting them on your shoulders. And uh, I believe that uh, 
you're going to have a tremendous reward in heaven. And uh, these people that you lift up and promote, in the world's eyes that become greater than you, Jesus said that no one is greater than the master. And because uh, you're the master and the mentor and the coach, uh, none of the people that eclipse you in the world's eyes and the world's uh, assumptions actually do eclipse you in God's kingdom. And uh, you're going to get this great reward in heaven and uh, be promoted to this a great place in heaven. This is a beautiful blueprint. Uh, like I say to everybody recently, uh, you don't have to uh, pay me uh, to connect, but I'd love to connect on Zoom or Skype and uh, talk this over with you. Of course, you can give me a donation if you like, but I'd love to have a face-to-face -face talk with such a champion, such a beautiful person as yourself. And uh, uh, you truly are beautiful. Uh, this is an extraordinary uh, blueprint. Uh, I think uh, you can achieve all of this. I think you can do all of this. Uh, each of these blueprints could uh, have 30 points on them. Uh, I could, uh, you could uh, send more money and I could give you another 10. <laughs> Uh, but um, may God bless you and keep you. I hope this uh, really built you up and uh, really encouraged you. I'd love to hear your feedback. So if you're listening to this, uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you liked that. God bless.